Konnichiwa and hajime mashite to you all. Today we're going to do something I like to call cooking with Sensei Ichi. We're gonna make something called Japanese fried rice. You're going to need one carrot, one stalk of celery, an onion, a red pepper, and for you vegans out there, we have meatless meatballs. We're also gonna be using these four sauces. Shoyu, or soy sauce, ketchup, Worcestershire sauce, and tonkatsu sauce, which is basically Japanese barbecue sauce. And of course, the main key ingredient we're gonna be needing, we're gonna be using Japanese sticky rice. So we're gonna start with the makogiri to start cutting the carrot. Uh, we're gonna start nice downward strokes, uh, cutting into, you know, solid, even slices. You wanna make sure that while you're cutting, you leave the knuckle right in front so you don't cut your finger off and end up like uh, like I am right here. This is you no know, good. I can only count to four, it's terrible. Or four and a half, really. Sometimes you gotta get in there for the deeper, heavier ends, and uh, we have some nice chopped carrots. Okay, next ingredient we're gonna use. So to cut the celery, we're gonna use the hirari kesagiri, which is cutting down from the right to the left. We're gonna do a diagonal cut. So we're gonna get a nice angled slice off to the side, down to the left here, even slices, nice and fluid motions. You really wanna let the sword do most of the work here. If you have little thicker parts, we're gonna get a nice even, cut straight in, cut in angle, angles, hirari kesagiri, Nice slice, beautiful. Look at this, look at these angles, beautiful. Okay, next, we're gonna go on to our onion. Now for the onion, we wanna make sure that we cut off the top and tail. We're gonna do the makogiri. We're gonna end up right in here, nice and even cut, right off the top, and we're gonna take our bottom and oh, all the way on the bottom. To avoid tears, we're gonna cut down into the right, which is the migiri kasegiri. I'm gonna be cutting off at my right angle here. Nice and avoid these tears. The great thing about cutting with a sword, I'm not allowing any of these fumes from the onion to really make me cry because, you know, samurai don't cry. For the essence of saving time, we're gonna do a more intermediate technique called uh, Inazuma Giri, which is a zigzag lightning bolt cut to cut this onion. Here we go. Okay, and there you have it. So now we have our nicely chopped onions and we learned a new cut. We're gonna use the Joran no Kame, which the starting position is gonna be overhead and we're gonna use the Mako Giri to cut the top and tail off of this pepper. There we go. The top and tail nice cut. Julienne these very nicely, even slice. And I use organic pepper. You don't have to use organic pepper, but I chose organic pepper because, let's, who's kidding, I'm fancy like that. I'm gonna cut these meatballs using the Yoko Ichi Onji, which is our side to side cut. So I'm gonna really be careful with the fingers, so I'm gonna keep my fingers on top. I'm gonna be slicing it all the way through. These meatballs are a little tender. I'm getting nice, even slices. We wanna make sure that our katana goes back into our saya clean, so we wanna use the chibori to remove all excess from the blade. I'm going to add my redraw all the way in, making sure that we're not getting our fingers near the blade, and then I saw the redraw. So now that we've done all of our prep work, we're gonna take these ingredients, or we're gonna cook them separately, and then we're gonna add in the rice and the wet ingredients a little bit later. Now we're going to sweat the pan. We're gonna add a little bit of oil. We wanna make sure this pan is nice steam coming off of it, and a good distribution of oil so we don't have anything sticky. So we're gonna add in our ingredients first before we add in the rice, so we're gonna go technically dry and then wet. We're gonna put them in until we get a nice brown over most of them, so you give it a little bit of flavor. So it's a good amount of flavor, add in those celery, get our carrots in here, and we're gonna add our nice red peppers. So we're gonna nice, even glaze using all that some oil on there. Don't want to rush it because if you rush it, you're going to burn it. We want a nice, even brown glaze over top of it so you really get all that flavor to come out of the vegetables and help the oil kind of cook with the paint. Okay, now that we have a nice bronze on our veggies, we're getting some summer sun here. Ooh, look at that. I wish you could smell that. Mm, it smells like. It smells like success is what it smells like. Uh, I have vegan meat, so this is actually a vegan dish, so it's all your call if you want to make vegan meat, real meat, add some protein in here. It takes a little, doesn't take as long to cook as the veggies do, so you can put it in last. So now, while this is cooking, we're gonna mix our rice in the bigger pan and the wok, uh, and we're gonna take a walk down to Food Town, and we're gonna make some good food. I'm gonna scrape around the outside so I get all the rice off, get a nice even mix on the top of that pan, just like that, so we get it all nice and free and clear. We have a nice circular looking oval tea style rice. We don't want to smush the rice because then we'll break the rice. We want to have a nice even smooth, so I like to kind of just 
give it little cuts just to section of this rice up a little bit. Okay, so now we add in our wet ingredients. So we're gonna start with our shoyu, which is our soy sauce, our kikuman. Give a nice little even glaze. There is no real specifics in terms of how much I use. Just use like a, you know, a, good, a decent amount. Add in your ketchup. You're gonna get a nice little even spread over the top of the ketchup here. These reds and browns are really taking color. And what they're gonna do is these sauces are gonna add their own nuance of flavor and they're also gonna give us a nice crisp uh, layer on our rice. And we're gonna get into our tonkatsu sauce, which is Japanese barbecue sauce. The best kikoma makes the best. It comes out quick, so you gotta be careful with it, but it's an amazingly delicious sauce. Okay, now the last sauce we're gonna use is the Worcestershire sauce. And actually, there's a funny story behind the Worcestershire sauce, how it got its name. Uh, one day there was a man in a deli, and you just wanna use a little bit of this Worcestershire sauce, not too much, because it has a pretty strong flavor behind it. There was a man in a deli, and uh, he would sit down to eat a steak, and when he went sit down to eat the steak, he said, uh, you know, oh, is this, does this sauce have, or is it, does this steak have any sauce that I could eat with it? And the man brought out a couple sauces, and he, back then it was just called black sauce, and so he just brought it out, and uh, the man put the black sauce on the steak, and he went to go eat it, and he took the bite, and he goes, oh, this is delicious, and he goes, hey, what's this here sauce? That's how Worcester sauce got its name. Fun fact for you, write that down. And the good thing about sticky rice, Japanese sticky rice, is it saturates all of that flavor, so all the ingredients, all the wet ingredients will saturate nicely into that rice. So now we're gonna add all these nice crispy, not crispy, all these nice bronze and glazed uh, vegetables into our rice. So we're gonna use our spatula here. And I like to use a plastic one so it doesn't scratch the Teflon on the pan. And I see the mix of all this stuff. I wish you could smell how good this is. It smells so delicious. And now all these ingredients together now in a bigger wok. I'm gonna kind of blend them all together. Get a nice even mix. I like to scoop and turn scoop and turn and really bring them together more so you don't get clusters or clumps of ingredients on your fried rice. Let this sit for like, I don't know, maybe like five to 10 minutes so it'll really get a nice kind of crust on it. And personally me, I like when it crusts because the flavor, it caramelizes it, it makes it come out a little bit sweeter and a little nicer, but I like my stuff kind of like that, almost al dente. Turn this heat off here. Get a little on the plate. These are our here. And just for a little extra beauty, we're gonna get a nice little garnish of pepper on here. Just to add a nice little flavor and voila. There you have it. This is our Japanese fried rice, uh, my father's invention. He almost sold it to Trader Joe's, but he decided to run a martial arts school instead. The good thing about this rice, you could bag it, put it in the refrigerator and have it for the entire week. Uh, you could put eggs in it, have it for breakfast. You could put chocolate, have it put on dessert. Uh, you can do anything you want with it. Don't do that last part. So thank you guys so much for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed this meal. Uh, this is going to be first of many. So tell me if you think we should do more, uh, more of these tutorials on cooking. I think it's kind of fun. This is Sensei Ichi from the TLSA Karate Studio. Uh, if you like what you saw, please subscribe to the channel. I'll put out a video every Monday and Thursday at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, if you like this dish and it looked appetizing, hit that thumbs up button, comment below. Let me know what you thought. Let me know if you tried it at home and you liked it. Thank you so much again. And until next time. Tongsu.